Picture this, you just had an amazing dive trip with an awesome crew taking care of you. You pack up your gear, say your goodbyes, and get all ready to head on home. But then you have to stop and wait on your dive buddy who you see passing a white envelope over to the captain of the boat. Later, you decide to ask your dive buddy what that was all about and you get hit with a sinking feeling. Your dive buddy tells you that they were giving the captain the tip for the crew and you realize you didn't leave one at all. The shop's closed now, so it's too late to go back and leave one now, and with your flight in the morning, you aren't gonna have time to stop by before the shop opens up to leave one. I'm telling you now, you do not wanna be that person. And that's why in this video, I'm going over five things I wish I knew about tipping on dive trips. Let's get into it. <laughs> I'm Thomas Hughes, a professional scuba instructor, and one thing that I try instilling in every single one of my open water students is dive tipping etiquette. Now, I know this video might be a bit controversial depending on what side of the argument you sit on, on whether we should even tip at all, or you know how much we should tip and things like that. So I just ask that you leave those comments down below, but let's do so in a respectful way, even if you disagree with me. Now, I understand that tipping in general is a fairly sore subject for a lot of people, and sometimes even more so when it comes to diving and tipping in the dive industry. I mean, hey, let's be honest about it. You know, diving can be a fairly expensive hobby out there, and the idea of having to put even more money on top of what I already paid for a trip or what I already paid for a charter isn't something a lot of divers are very happy to hear. So if that's the case and things are so expensive, why do I even need to tip? Well, it might surprise you, but to be totally honest, depending on where you are in the world, tipping the dive crew might really be their only source of income. There's a lot of internships out there that are completely unpaid, or sometimes divers will go ahead and get their uh, instructor training for free, but they have to work maybe six months or a full year without any income at all. And tips are really the only way they can survive. Other times what you'll see often is dive instructors or dive professionals are given what's called a living wage. So whatever the local area is, it's enough money to basically pay for food and, and maybe rent if you have a roommate, uh, maybe rent on your own if you're really lucky. Uh, but usually it's, it's rent with a roommate and food and that's about it. So tips are really the only way to afford any niceties at all. Uh, often dive professionals have to furnish their own professional gear as well. So all of their dive equipment and stuff, they have to do all the maintenance and things like that. And that all has a cost. As we know, diving can be expensive. So tips are really the only way they can get anything beyond just their living wage, just their kind of standard cost of living. Now, personally, I'm based in North Carolina in the United States, so on the East Coast of the US. And if you'd like to know what I make as a dive instructor, I'm happy to share that as well. And I can do that in a whole separate video. Just let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I can try to get some friends of mine that I know from other parts of the US or maybe just other parts of the world to share what their standard income is as well. Just so you have an idea of like what dive professionals get paid and kind of why tipping is a thing in the dive industry in terms of what an instructor makes or what a dive guide makes versus um, you know where that tip can really help them out. Not talking about the expense of everything. Obviously, if you pay for a liveaboard, that's expensive, but that cost doesn't all go right into the instructor's pocket, obviously. They don't own the boat or anything like that. So if you want a video like that, let me know down in the comments below. For now, like I said, what I can tell you is that I know for myself in the US here and for some friends of mine in the US as well, we're paid pretty little when you think about how much effort is actually involved in teaching a class. Uh, open water class, for example, is a four day class minimum, plus you have either e-learning or in classroom time, plus all the coordinating of dive gear, uh, sending out emails to coordinate with students, talking to those students usually the week leading up to the class, if not a couple weeks leading up to the class, usually answering questions afterwards and who knows how long the dive day will be because it's based off students' performance. And you know, that might be a four hour day or a six hour day, or maybe even longer, depending on the size of your class, the needs that they have and you know how quickly they're picking things up. Because at the end of the day, we wanna make sure students perform well and we'll spend the extra time with them usually as instructors. Most good instructors do at least. The ones that just kind of rush through things are doing so because they aren't paid that much, unfortunately, and they might not care as much. And it's kind of an unfortunate piece of the dive industry. This all sounds really negative, so let me just be clear that this is not a video intended to say like, hey, pay me more, uh, tip me more, or the dive industry has bad pay. That's probably an entire separate video, which is why I'm saying if you wanna know about like salaries in the dive industry or anything like that, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll make a separate video about that. But for this one specifically, let's just kind of accept the idea 
idea that tipping is probably something that's going to be needed in many different parts of the world, depending on where you are, so that those dye professionals can have something above just minimum cost of living. This video specifically is intended for those people that ask the question all the time of, hey, you know, how much do I tip when I go on this trip? Or what should I tip? Or what's the etiquette around tipping in the dive industry? And as an instructor, I'm asked this a lot. So I started teaching my students this as they go through my courses and now I'm teaching you. Okay, so let's put aside the whole salary thing and how much instructors are paid and, and all of that. Why else should I tip? Other than just they get paid very little, like why should I actually tip the dive instructor or the boat crew or whomever it is that's helped me with my dive experience? Well, let's take an example of a dive charter where you're going off the coast for a weekend for you know a couple boat dives or maybe a dive trip where you're taking that charter boat out every day of the week for five, six days, or you know even more so in a liveaboard experience where you're on a boat and that crew's with you and that's your living quarters for the whole week. In any of these situations, the dive crew is performing many different tasks and roles that you shouldn't even notice. And if it's a good crew, you really won't notice because they're doing this all behind the scenes and in the background without really bothering you as a guest, you know, on this experience basically, right? So this could be things like they're playing the mechanic role. If you're on a liveaboard, they probably have like a desalination thing to give you fresh water. So they're making sure that you have plenty of fresh water for drinkable water. Or even on a small charter, those dive guides are usually also packing snacks that they've made in the morning before the boat left. They pack all those sandwiches or whatever it is, and then they're handing those out. They're collecting the trash afterwards. They're cleaning up after people. With all that in mind, they wear many, many different hats. You know, someone's out there being a lookout for you to watch for other boats and other vessels that are in the area, letting them know, hey, there's the divers down below. With these divers below, please don't come near us. They are watching the bubbles for the group. They're looking out for divers who pop up away from the group. Maybe they had an issue, an emergency. There's an SMB that goes up. They're looking for that too. And a good boat crew is doing all of that for you and they aren't getting paid anything extra. It's just kind of part of the job to do all these different tasks and wear all these different hats, so to speak. At the end of the day, this is considered a service-based industry, just like being a waiter or a bartender or something like that. And you provide a service and then tips in many different areas of the world are kind of, I don't wanna say expected, but kind of a, a part of the business. You know, ultimately, of course, it's up to you on if you do or don't wanna tip. I don't want you to feel pressured that you absolutely have to tip or anything, but I'm just trying to give you a little bit of background, a little insight to what these dive pros are going through and what these boat crews are going through. In other parts of the world, tipping might be something that is, you know, more of an insult. You've probably heard that before with wait staff, for example. But at the end of the day, kind of a, a general statement that I can say for the US, Mexico, Caribbean, uh, for most of the islands in the Caribbean, obviously there's lots of different countries there and, um, and all of that. Tipping is really kind of part of the whole situation. You know, they, they rely on tips. Okay, so if you're still watching at this point, I assume you either agree that a tip should be given or maybe you disagree that it should be, but you're gonna be giving a tip anyway. So the very next logical question is, how much do I tip? And then we'll move into some other questions that'll come up from there as well. So, you know, when it comes to how much we tip, this is super debated as well, and it's something that just like in the you know wait, waiter industry or bartender industry or you know the food industry, I guess we should say, some people will say 10% or 15, 20% for meals here in the US. You know, there, there's a lot of variance there and, and there's a lot of debate, but I'll give you the general guidelines that I've heard that are pretty widely accepted and it's what I share with uh, the people that again, go through my classes or are on a trip with me or something like that. Now, the industry standard that I've heard here in the US for quite a while now is basically paying between five to ten dollars per tank and a tip so if you did a two tank charter then you would pay between ten and twenty dollars right so two tanks five dollars each or two tanks ten dollars each now the problem with that is the five to ten dollars per tank thing has been around for probably 20 or 30 years at least uh, and I think we can all agree that inflation has more than likely affected us in the last 20 to 30 years so as much as I hate saying it um, really I, I kind of been trying to tell people maybe more like 10 to 20 dollars per tank or 10 to 15 dollars per tank um, that's definitely a lot more money for people and, and maybe they can't afford that and I completely respect and understand that but I just want you to kind of take in mind the idea of the five to ten dollars that you probably hear everybody say it's really been around for at least 20 years maybe longer. Another way to look at this is actually very similar to the food industry and that's doing a more of like 10 to 20 percent and that way it's percentage based and that percentage is going to be based off of the experience that you had. So for example if you're doing a charter and you know the charter costs uh, 200 bucks or something like that then 10 percent of that would be 20 dollars, 20 percent would be 40 dollars. So you know between 20 and 40 dollars for the charter that you go on 
is appropriate for you know doing that type of trip. Uh, similarly, if you're doing a week long trip where you're staying at a resort and then you're going to be doing dives and stuff like that, usually 10 to 20% of the total cost of the trip is a good way to do that. For that also, that is the total amount for the entire crew, not per person or anything like that. So I guess that's where it differs from the food industry. It's not like I'm giving a 20% tip to every single person on the boat. Uh, some of those boat crews could be, you know, four or five people. That would be pretty excessive. But a 10 to 20% tip for the entire boat, and then they split that across everybody. And if you think about it, you know, if you have 10 people on a boat or even a small boat, like a six pack or an eight pack or something like that, uh, six people giving $10 each is gonna be $60. And $60 split between, you know, a three person crew gives them each 20 bucks. Like that's not too bad at all. And that's a, a decent way to kind of split that up like that. Now I will say the percentages are usually quoted a lot more often for like the live aboard trip or like the week long dive trip. Not so much like just a, a coastal charter for the weekend or just like a one day charter, but you can do it for the charters as well. And it really works out to be close to the same amount of money. And again, it's just for the total boat crew. It's not just for, you know, an individual person or each individual person. Now, let me just go ahead and give a couple quick examples just to kind of give an idea of what I'm talking about here. Now, now, for the first example, I went to the Bahamas on a little bit of a cheaper liveaboard, and I believe it was around 1300 US dollars. Following the 10 to 20% tip rule, I decided to give a tip that was between 130 and 260 dollars, which would be 10% and 20% of the total trip price. That went to the captain of the boat, they distributed it between the whole team. Uh, and I gave that at the end of the week, which again, I'll talk about that piece of it in just a moment here. But just as an example for a $1,300 trip, it cost me another $130 to $260 in dive tips, depending on how well my experience was. Now, as another example, I went down to the Caribbean and I spent a week on a resort there where for five days straight, we did three tanks every single day. So two morning dives and one afternoon dive. Fairly common for a little bit of a dive heavy uh, trip where you do something like that. So for a total of five days, I had three dives every day for 15 total dives or 15 tanks total. Now at five to $10 per tank, or if I did that little adjustment for inflation and maybe I did 10 to $20 per tank instead, I'd be paying somewhere between $75 and $300 for that full week of diving. Again, for all 15 tanks uh, to be split between the entire crew. Now, in all of these cases, whether you're doing percentages or the five to 10 per tank or 10 to 20 per tank or 10 to 15, whatever it is, you'll notice that these are all ranges, but that range is based off the service that you experienced and the quality of the experience that you had. I've been to Curacao three different times with a group called Ocean Encounters. It's a dive operator there uh, located in Curacao. And I absolutely love that boat crew. I've uh, met the owner, I've met the managers, you know, I know the crew really well at this point. Um, and in three different years, I've gone three different times now, and every time has been an amazing experience. So I'm always tipping at the higher end of that, usually that 20%, and sometimes I even give a little extra to individual boat crew members if they have a, you know, very specific experience that I get to share with them. You know, maybe they showed me something really cool that I've never seen before, or uh, they've taken a lot of extra time to help me with my gear or something like that. Uh, and I just want to give that one person something a little extra. And I'll talk about again how tipping works in that sense in just a moment. First, I just want to reiterate that these are general guidelines, okay? This is definitely not something that I'm saying that this has to happen every time, no matter what trip you go on. But I do think that most dive trips nowadays do have a tipping etiquette policy of some sort or, you know, kind of an unwritten policy about tipping. Uh, but just, you know, respect the local customs. Again, you either agree to tip or you at least agree that a tip is going to happen, whether it should or not. That's a separate debate. Feel free to leave comments down below on that. Uh, but let's just say you are going to give a tip. We talked about how much to give, but now it's more of a question of when do I actually tip? And, you know, do I do it at the start of every day, at the end of every day, at the end of the week? How should I do that? Who do I give it to? That sort of thing. So first of all, this might just sound as like really simple advice, but some people don't realize this. But uh, first of all, you just ask. <laughs> so if you ask the captain of the boat or uh, like one of the managers in the dive shop or really anyone in the dive shop, like what the tipping policy is, They'll probably tell you. I've been to some shops where they have like a lockbox in the dive shop itself and they say, hey, just ask for an envelope, stuff the money in there. You can write your name on the envelope if you want, write a note if you want to the dive crew, and then just stick the envelope in there. Uh, at the end of the week, we pool all the tips together and we split it between everybody. Cool. If that's the way they do it, that's the way they do it. Uh, I've been other places where they say, hey, yeah, here's an envelope, hang on to it. At the end of the week, put your tip into it, give it to the captain, the captain will split it across the dive crew. Cool. 
totally fine. Maybe that's the way they do it. Uh, and then I've also been places where they say, um, hey, our tipping policy is that if you want to tip someone, give it to them directly. Uh, so, you know, they earned that tip basically. We don't pool tips or anything like that. If that's the way they want to do it, cool. Uh, personally, I think the, the pooling of tips in general, whether it's through a captain or through the dive shop itself, is really cool. Uh, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that aren't on the boat helping you out. They might be doing tank fills for you every night so they know that you have fresh full tanks in the morning. Uh, if you are renting gear, they might be doing things like maintaining that gear, rinsing the gear, etc. So I kind of like when they pull the tips and divvy them out. But ask. Asking the dive shop or asking the captain is the best way to do it. And they'll also tell you if, hey, actually we don't accept tips because local customs or anything like that. Now, again, just to reiterate, in my experiences, usually I've been told to just hold my tips till the end of the week. Uh, put them in an envelope handed to the captain or to the manager at the dive shop. They divvy them out. They usually ask that I put my name on the envelope and then if I want to leave a note, um, then you know I'll leave a note, maybe calling out a few individual crew members or just call out the operation in general about just, hey, you know, thanks for the great week that sort of thing. It's usually a nice personal touch. Okay, I've talked a lot about like dive trips, dive charters and things like that, but what about tipping for your local dive shop, especially in a situation like where I'm at currently. I'm a little bit more inland, a couple hours from the coast. We do a lot of classes in a local quarry. And while we do take people out to the ocean or down to like Florida Springs and stuff like that, the majority, the vast majority of our classes and diving are done in a local rock quarry that is flooded and you know, we go dive in there all the time. It's not. Uh, too uncommon for more inland shops to do that. So first of all, honestly, what I've seen is for dive courses, especially open water, because students just don't typically know how the tipping etiquette works, a lot of courses don't see any tips get exchanged at all. Um, I have been tipped before as an instructor. I've turned down tips and said like, hey, no, it's totally fine. Like I didn't do anything special this, this class or anything like that. It was just a normal class. Uh, and then when people insist, then you know I might accept or something at that point. Um, and, and tips are fine. And just like, again, any other service industry, if you had a great experience and you want to tip your instructor, that's normally a fairly welcomed thing. And at least in the US and a lot of Western countries, it, it's kind of a respectful thing of like, hey, no, 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 you did really well. Please, I'd like to offer this to you as a gift, as a way of saying thank you for the awesome experience that I had. That's totally fine. Uh, so in general, if you do want to give a tip like that for your local instructor or local dive shop, then please feel free to do so. Uh, the same things apply here. One, ask the shop about tipping, if they accept tips or not, because some shops don't. Uh, and then, you know, how the tipping process works. Should you give it to the shop? Should you give it directly to the instructor? You know, how that process goes um, for everything there. Uh, two, I would say it's the same dollar amounts as well. You know, the five to $10 per tank or, if you want to step up a little bit more to like 10 to 15 or 10 to 20, just to kind of help out with the inflation piece, uh, or even 10 to 20% of the total course cost, right? And that'll work out as well. So uh, again, just taking open water as an example, you're gonna have to do four open water dives um, at a minimum. And then, you know, technically you have your confined water dives as well, but let's just count the four checkout dives as we call them in our system for Patty. Uh, those four checkout dives is gonna be four tanks. So $5 a tank would be 20 bucks. $10 a tank, um, that's gonna be $40 instead. If you count the confined water dives, there's five confined water dives. Um, depending on the situation, it's probably still only two tanks for that uh, each day. So, you know, I mean, you have to do the math there, obviously, but you can add it up that way or just say like, hey, you know, the course cost me 500 bucks, so I'm gonna give $50 for a 10% tip. The five to $10 per tank or 10 to $20 per tank, whatever you wanna say there, that's definitely like a very nice gesture and something that should be thought of because Inland shops, especially ones that aren't on, you know, charters all the time, they aren't getting tips very often. So they still have the same pay situation where they aren't paid very much in most cases, but they don't get very many tips either because they're just teaching classes. And a lot of times students don't think about tipping their instructor. They just think, oh, I paid for the class. So I'm all set, right? And that's where that debate comes in. I, I paid for the class. Why do I have to pay more for the instructor's tip as well? And again, I understand the debate all I can say is, you know, instructors don't own the shop usually, so they don't see this like huge profit margin or anything like that. Uh, and again, I can get into a whole separate video about pay in the dive industry and stuff like that. Now, regardless of where the dives are happening, whether it's a new course that you're taking or especially when you're going on a trip, tipping is one of those things that you should really budget for because it can be a non-insignificant amount, right? Like there, there is a true value to paying 10 to 20% of my trip cost, for example, on a dive trip. And when you think about it, there's actually a lot of little things that start adding up that go into that budget. You know, it's things like 
airport transfer fees from the airport to the resort that I'm going to, whether it's a cab or a shuttle or something like that. Uh, you're probably going to be giving some tips to wait staff when you go to restaurants at the resort. Uh, maybe the bartender staff, if you uh, are partaking in some adult beverages, you might want to tip them as well. And then, of course, this dive tipping etiquette as well. And it can really add up and it should be part of your total budget as you plan your dive trip. Then talking about that trip, there's just all the other elements that you need to plan for as well. And there's really a lot to it. But don't worry, that's why in this video, I go over all the tips I wish I knew before I planned my first dive trip. Click or tap the screen now to check that out. And with that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.